Welcome to another Soccer Down Here 1v1. Time to catch up with one of the guys behind OKC 1889 FC, Dustin Hooker, to find out about their trek to the NPSL. Dustin, thanks for hanging out for a 1v1. Hey, I appreciate you having me. All right. So why the NPSL and why now? Um, you know, it, it was always the NPSL for us, actually. It's kind of a – I'll give you the long, short story. Um we attempted to come into the league back in 2017. Uh, we had started in 2015 with a team called OKC Pulse. Uh, my business partner and I, we had put it together to kind of help the kids around here who didn't have anything to do during the summer. Uh, did a lot of just traveling around playing teams. Um, got to go play uh, Pulse Athletics. Um, at the time, we got to play FC Dallas as sort of back end of their, their first team roster. Um, which was a great experience, um, you know, just traveled around playing teams and tried to get in in 2017. And I think we were the right team, just wrong time, to be honest. Uh, you know, it was sometimes that's just the way it works out. Um, so we spent 17, 18 and 19 in the UPSL, got to learn a lot about ourselves, um, had some success. And we were fortunate enough that, you know, even conversations in 2019 went really well. And we said uh, we'd, we'd like to really start thinking more about it. And then the MPSL said, well, we'd really like to start that conversation and, and see about you guys coming in. And we said, great. So the way the league was going um, for us and the UPSL didn't really fit our model. Um, and we felt the MPSL really did. So it was just uh, then it became, you know, right team, right time. So. I think that's probably the, uh, the the best explanation, and we're really excited to kind of seize the moment and uh, take the opportunity to enjoy the the you know the spring summer of 2021. This is the question that I ask everybody when I, I do these one v ones: is that everybody in their business office or somewhere has a dry erase board? They've got that to do list. It could be something that's stuck on the uh by a magnet on your fridge it could be you know it could be like a little eight by twelve magnet board on your fridge could be a big dry white erase board that's in your office uh could be four or five of them that are three feet long you know and you're trying to figure out what to put on them where is your dry erase board where is your to-do list right now and how much stuff is left on it before we get into the 2021 season Oh, geez. Um, so it is in my office. Um, I'm in downtown Oklahoma City. I have a giant erase board, just like you said. There is a to-do list. Um, you know, the, the, the big part of what's been done is because of COVID, um, a lot of like buying uniforms, buying training gear, you know, just sort of all the setup was done because even in 2020, thought we were going to play that summer didn't happen so you've got we've got all that stuff the 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 only to-do list for us really is is i've got a couple of i guess you could say positions uh administratively that i'm going to be hiring for um partnered up with some people that are going to help me with the social media so that's good uh just to you know give it a different flavor make it a little bit more fun uh but the biggest challenge that i think a lot of owners are having is kind of solidifying uh, your facilities. We've got options, but I, you know, like everybody, we want the best option and best experience for the players and the, and the fans. So as COVID starts to sort of unleash its uh, grasp on, uh, uh, I guess you could say the school systems, we believe we'll be able to play at Norman North again, um, which is a great venue. The teams that have come in and and visited there will tell you it's it's world class. Um, so that's the biggest to do list right now is just sort of solidifying that. If not, um, we've got two other options um, that are very nice: the fields, the, the setting. But we really like to be there. I think that's just traditionally where we've always played, and and the, the players and the fans seem to enjoy it. So that's probably the biggest one. And then, uh, you know, college soccer has kind of changed in its uh, its avenue as far as playing in the, the, just the fall. So we've got a lot of teams playing in the spring still, especially in the NAI. Um, and so we utilize players from there and we've got players that are still going to be playing in mid to late April. So putting the team together and then uh, uh, just getting on the field will be the next challenge. But we're excited. Like I said, I don't think we have anything that is barn burning yet. So 
When it comes to the folks that you want to bring into the franchise, whether they're going to be wearing the jersey, playing for you on game days, or the folks that you want to bring in from an administrative standpoint to help out with the day-to-day operations of everything, I know that you're looking for a specific kind of individual, not just a specific kind of player or a specific kind of you know job description, but what kind of individuals are you looking for to represent OKC 1889 the way that you're looking yeah, I mean, it's a great question. I, you know, a part of, of what we've always done, and it, I think this is a big piece, is our culture. Um, you know, my business partner and I come from, a, a, you know, the business background. However, we like good people. Um, you know, there's players that will play for us that will be good players, not great, but they're great people. Um, you know, a lot of the players we get kind of hang out in this area and a lot of the people even on the administrative side are from this area um they're passionate about you know soccer uh some of them either grew up playing or you know we get a lot of international people who will graduate from universities here they'll wind up being coaches they'll work you know monday through friday eight to five jobs and they get you know plugged into the community and so we want the right i guess you could say character of people People are going to do the right thing. They're going to show up. They're responsible. Um, and they're, they're just passionate about it. You know, we feel like if we create the right environment, people will want to be uh, around us. And we've had a lot of success with, with that. I haven't had to go all over the country to find players. Um, ironically, players have came to us. So uh, uh, that's been fun. And administratively, it's the same situation. There's just a lot of passionate soccer fans here. So. How difficult has the last 12 months been for you as a as a sports business owner, administrator, guy at the front lines kind of a thing? How difficult has it been? You know, I've tried to stay busy. You know, I coach college soccer on the side. Um, you know, the businesses I have allow me to sort of I'm blessed to be able to do that. But, you know, what I have learned is the impact it's had on the youth. Um, I deal with a lot of high school kids. Um, young college kids. And I just think, you know, you know, the biggest challenge for me is trying to keep those people engaged because they get pretty uh, uh, down. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I grew up, we didn't have to go through anything like this. So I don't know what it's like to have to stop um, and not be able to do something that you're passionate and you love. We get to do coaching, uh, you know, the summer, the summer team, obviously it's fun. It's great. But if you're a kid who comes from a background where, that's kind of the, the highlight in your day and in your life and you're not able to do it anymore. Um, it becomes very, very, um, I guess you could say demoralizing. So that's probably been the biggest challenge for me. I like working with the youth. And when I see that happen, you know, it's just, there's nothing, your hands are tied. And so you're constantly trying to figure out ways to, to impact these kids and keep them engaged. So I think for me, that was the biggest challenge um, personally. Um, just to see them and, and not be able to do as much as I'd like to do. When you start play this season, you're going into the Heartland Conference, and there are some franchises there that a lot of folks uh, who follow the NPSL, they know because they're always making deep playoff runs. You know, you mentioned Tulsa Athletic earlier on. They're going to be a part of the Heartland. You've got Ozark, Demise is there, and uh, Dallas City is there, and you've got another new team in, in Arkansas, the Arkansas Wolves. When it comes to expectations for this season on the field in the heartland conference what are you looking for expectations wise um you know the good thing for us is is we've played some of these teams when we weren't even in the mbsl so we kind of know what the level looks like um i think that's the part where a lot of teams when they make a transition into these leagues they don't they think they know until they know, you know, until they find out. And then when they find out, they're like, oh, we didn't realize the level was this good. Um, So for us, you know, and talking to Mark, uh, my partner, we want to win. You know, we have goals set for the next three years. um, And as time goes by, I'll elaborate on that more. But at the end of the day, we want to win. We want definitely want to compete. Everybody's good. I mean, at this level, everybody's going to be good. Everybody's going to challenge for stuff. Um, But, you know, we want to have a great culture, but we want to win. So the, the idea is, is that we'll, we'll go in with the mindset that, you know, if we can win games, we're going to try to win games. Um, and if we fall short, then we'll go back to the drawing board and say, okay, where were we not good? Was it, was it, uh, was it culture? Was it wrong players? Was it wrong staff? We'll, we'll figure it out. But in the next two years, that's our goal. 
um, we want to win. Stylistically on the, on the field, when somebody comes to see you play, what kind of, a, what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, on the field, uh, I guess, philosophy are you looking at when it comes to putting a team out there for OKC? Yeah. Um, you know, we kind of prided ourselves on being very good defensively. Um, so if we can limit the other team from opportunities, I think offensively we will definitely have enough to, to go forward. Um, the biggest challenge for, for the season, I think, and it's just every summer, and I've done this for six years now, is keeping people healthy, um, finding the right balance on that, and then did you bring in enough, enough depth because some of these players have to leave for different reasons, whether it's, you know, if they're international, they go back home, or, you know, they're at a deep, big D1 school and the coach says you have to be in by July 1st. Okay, well, are we good enough to have enough uh, – uh, players on the on the uh, uh, the depth chart to, to still stay competitive, but I think we'll be you know very good going forward. Um, attacking will be very athletic, um, which you have to be in this league. Um, so my hope is is that the style is attractive in the sense that we keep the ball and that we just limit the other team for opportunities and we finish ours. You mentioned this a little bit earlier on when we were talking about. Uh, Oklahoma City and and the area when it comes to what the sport means and and talent pool and things like that. But if there's one thing that you could express to everyone listening who's just a fan of soccer or a fan of the NPSL that they may not necessarily know about the soccer footprint in and around Oklahoma City and what the sport means to the area, what do you think that is? We've got a lot of good talent, man. I think, you know, we come from such a small market, you know, when people think about Oklahoma City, you know, maybe it's, you know, the University of Oklahoma and it's, uh, you know, the American football, college football, or maybe it's the Thunder and basketball, which is great. These, you know, they're your professional team in, in the Thunder and you've got a, a, a top 10 college football team, you know, in Norman, Oklahoma. But, you know, like we have good, talented players. We're kind of, I think people sleep on this area in this market, even uh, in the youth. And ironically, we've got a player on the national team right now um, that's currently probably getting subbed in to play uh, uh, against Northern Ireland. They came right out of Edmond, Oklahoma, which is basically a suburb of Oklahoma City. And so I just think, you know, locally, there's a lot of good soccer talent here that's untapped. Um, we get them into our youth systems and we play in our youth soccer. And then it's very difficult to, for some of these players to transition from high school to college, because we just don't get a lot of people who come in here and and, and look at our players. So the good piece is, is that if you're a fan of soccer, um, you know, you should be able to see some, some of that talent. Uh, not just with the guys that play college and come in from other countries, but we've got local players that are very good. Um, We have a local center back that's been playing with us since he was 14 years old and playing with the Imps since he was 14. He's gone down. He's played against FC Dallas as U17 when he was 15. Um, He was scouted at that point and and was looked upon as a very good player. And they wanted to come down and join their group. Um, he chose to stay in Norman, Oklahoma. And ironically, he's playing locally at an NAI school and he's killing it. Um, so, I mean, we've got, we've got good talent. And my hope is, is that if you're watching us, you'll see some of the good uh, domestic you know, talent that comes out of this area. All right. Time to cut the promo for those that want to keep an eye on everything going on with OKC 1889 FC. How do they do it? Um, you know, we've got, you know, our Twitter account, you've got our Instagram, you know, our website's been transitioning and going up through upgrades. So there's going to be a lot of uh, change in that as we try to promote um, the upcoming season. We have partnered up with Oklahoma Celtic, which is the club out of Norman, um, you know, good youth system. I'm, I'm from the area. They love the Imps. I think now that we've kind of partnered up with them, we'll have a lot more uh, fan base that we've had in the past. I mean, we used to get up to four or 500 people at our games, which is a lot for us. Um, but we're hoping to build off that. Uh, you know, we sell apparel and stuff at the, uh, at the games, but if somebody's a huge fan and wants something, um, I'm pretty accessible and I don't mind sending scarves or shirts. Um, you know, our, uh, new, our new imp's going to come out on shirts. And I think if people have seen that on our Twitter account, just the, the face of him, he's, he's pretty cool looking. So, 
kids like it, but I think, you know, get on our website and, uh, and follow us that way. And obviously on Twitter, Instagram, um, and, you know, as the season goes on, like I said, we're just constantly trying to improve. So. Dustin Hooker, one of the guys behind the move of OKC 1889 FC, finally to the NPSL. Dustin, thanks for hanging out with us for a soccer down here. One V one. We'll be keeping an eye as the season rolls on. We'll be keeping an eye on what's going on there in Oklahoma city. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you very much. John. I appreciate your time.